Welcome to the Impact Subsea presentation on the ISS 360, the world's smallest imaging sonar. This presentation is given by Ben Grant, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Impact Subsea Limited. This presentation will provide an overview of the ISS 360 sonar and its unique capabilities in the sonar market. The presentation will then look at the hardware itself, covering the boot end and electronics of the sonar, before moving on to look at the software and finally, the imagery which the sonar can produce. To start things off, a brief introduction to Impact Subsea. Impact Subsea design, manufacture and support a range of underwater sensors for underwater remotely operated and autonomous vehicles. This includes the sonar which we will cover today, a range of underwater altimeters, a range of survey grade depth sensors, a range of attitude and heading reference systems based on high-grade MEMS technology, and a flooded member detection system. The company is based in Ellen, Aberdeenshire, Scotland, where it has its head office and its production facility. Moving on to the ISS 360. First and foremost, it's the world's smallest sonar. It measures just 72 millimetres in length. Although it is small in size, it is certainly not uh, small in capability. In terms of range measurement, it can re measure up to 90 meters away from the sonar, and it can also provide a 2.5 millimeter range resolution. Now, ordinarily, the ISS 360 provides a chirp signal from 650 to 750 kilohertz. This is a 100 kilohertz chirp bandwidth signal, and this produces a 7.5 millimeter range resolution. However, the ISS 360 has the ability to produce a wider bandwidth chirp from 600 to 900 kilohertz. This 300 kilohertz chirp bandwidth signal allows us to provide a 2.5 millimeter range resolution. Along with the sonar hardware, we provide the advanced Seaview software, which we'll cover in detail shortly. Within the sonar, we have provided an integrated attitude and heading reference system. This provides your heading, your pitch, and your roll. Also, we've uh, done away with slip rings. Traditionally, in mechanically scanned sonars, such as this, uh, you'd utilize slip rings to connect your transducer to electronics. The downside with this approach is slip rings suffer from wear and tear, and periodically you have to send your sonar back to manufacturer for slip ring replacement. In the ISS 360, we've utilized an inductive coupling, so there's physically no connection between the transducer and electronics. This means no wear and no need to periodically return for servicing. In terms of communication, the sonar has serial communications, RS-232 and RS-485 as standard, and it also has Ethernet communications. In terms of the physical housing, we provide the sonar in titanium, depth rated down to 4,000 meters, so it can be used from the smallest to the very largest underwater vehicles, or optionally we can also provide it in a fully plastic acetyl housing, depth rated down to 1,500 meters. In terms of the actual hardware, so we have the sonar itself, and on the top of the sonar we have the boot end. This is uh, made of acetyl and it's filled with oil. And on the top of the sonar boot, we have a round disc, and behind that is a rubber diaphragm, which is used for pressure compensation. So the pressure inside the boot is equal to the pressure outside it at all depths. Around the center of the sonar is a recess. And this is provided to allow clamps for mounting the sonar securely to an underwater vehicle or other underwater asset. As mentioned, the sonar is available with a titanium or an acetyl body. It utilizes uh, the impact subsea locking clip arrangement to secure the connector in cap to the sonar. This is utilized on all impact subsea sensors and we utilize uh, industry standard subcon connector uh, to provide a reliable connection to the sonar. In terms of the boot end, if we were to take off the acetyl boot, this is what you would find inside the sonar. We have a composite wide bandwidth transducer, and behind that we have the backing material to hold the transducer in place, and also ensure that all the sound goes out the front of the transducer, none of it goes out the back. 
In the centre of the sonar we have the inductive coupling and transformer all integrated into one module. This is the part which does away with the uh, conventional slip rings. Underneath the transducer we also have an array of many many capacitors. Uh, these capacitors are continuously charging and discharging each time the sonar transmits a pulse of sound into the water. Within the boot end there's also a position sensor for the transducer itself. In terms of the electronics, these are housed in a one atmospheric pressure part of the sonar. Uh, they're highly compact, as you would expect. We have three boards, each eight layer thick, and they're Rigiflex PCBs. Uh, we have a, a holder, which basically holds the, the boards in place while they're inside the sonar, and all that is mounted to an end cap. And on that end cap, we also have uh, O-rings to seal it uh, inside the sonar body. If we were to take the electronics out of the sonar, this is what you'd see. The three PCBs all interconnected via flexes. The flexes provide a very robust and reliable connection uh, between the PCBs. Um, and they also allow the PCBs to be stacked very closely together without using large uh, connectors between each one. So that's the hardware. Now let's have a little look at the user interface, the software side of things. So when you first run CView, which can be run on Windows 7, 8 or 10, this is the window you'll be presented with. On the left hand side, you have a list of the applications that have been installed with CView. On the right hand side, you have a list of all the COM ports that the PC or laptop has uh, physically available to connect sensors to. And in the center of the screen, you have a list of impact subsea sensors that the software has detected. The CView software automatically runs through all of the COM ports at all known baud rates, so it will automatically pick up and detect any sensor which has been physically connected to the computer. Once you have your sensor, in this example the ISS360 sonar, if you click on the ISS360 sonar app, you'll be presented with this screen. On the left hand side we have a number of setup and configuration options. Uh, you can set up the, the sonar parameters such as the acoustics, the orientation, the communications. You can configure the display that you're looking at. You can turn on and off certain segments of it. You can have the heading picture and all displayed or turned off. You can have um, your kind of chart overlay on the sonar there, your ranges. All these can be turned on and off to suit your, your preference. You can also set the scanning direction of the sonar. You can zoom in and out, uh, etc. Along the lower part of the screen, we've put in the controls which the user will most likely use uh, most frequently. So we have the gain, the range, how close or far you want the sonar to look, uh, along with a speed setting. The sonar can be set to run in a, a low resolution mode to very quickly build up an image. This is ideal for basic obstacle avoidance uh, and navigation of an underwater vehicle. Or you can set it to run more slowly and produce a higher resolution image, which is ideal for target identification. In the center of the display, of course, you have the, the sonar imagery itself. Uh, and on the right hand side, we display the, the heading, pitch and roll. So let's look at the software. Now let's uh, come on to the, the final output from the sonar, which is, of course, the imagery. So in this example, we've got uh, various targets on screen. Uh, this example was taken in an abandoned outdoor swimming pool. Uh, it's relatively shallow water between 30 to 50 centimeters depth. Uh, and what we're seeing on the, the sonar image is the pool walls, the concrete walls. And we're also picking up uh, various rocks and debris that's in the water, along with sand ripples. And we're also picking up a barrier, which is showing at about the, the 12 o'clock position, which has been dropped into the pool. Due to the depth of the water, we're also picking up some of the surface ripples uh, in the imagery as well. This is the same swimming pool, this time looking at uh, a larger section of the pool. Uh, so we're picking up the, the pool walls. And if you look from around about the 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock position at the back, uh, wall. We're also picking up the sea waves which are coming into the, the pool and crashing in. And as they're crashing in, uh, cre creating a lot of bubbles, you can see the bubbles being picked up there. We're also picking up the, the pool floor 
uh, which is kind of covered in sand, and we're picking up a number of uh, rocks and debris from about the kind of uh, three o'clock to kind of seven o'clock position. In this example here, we have a, a jetty structure. Um, kind of shown in the, the top left hand side of the image. Uh, running through the middle of the image is the uh, floating pontoon. You can see all the, the, the floats, the underside of the floats as they're sitting on the, the water. And then down at the lower right, we're picking up the, the hull of a vessel which was sitting alongside the pontoon. In this example here, we have a uh, concrete slab, uh, again, in the swimming pool. Uh, in this example, we have the pool wall running from about the five o'clock to 11 o'clock position. We have the pool floor over on the right-hand side. Then about the uh, two, three o'clock position, we have a large concrete slab. Um, we're also given a good indication of the, the height of that slab off of the pool floor relative to the sonar by the large uh, acoustic shadow which it is casting. One last image is uh, something quite recognisable. It's uh, a cycle, a bicycle, uh, and a car tyre. So the car tyre is sitting about the, about the 8 o'clock position and the bicycle is sitting about the 7 o'clock position. We're also picking up uh, various sand waves and if you look at about the, about the 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock position, you can also pick up uh, a large number of rocks and kind of boulders that were close by as well. So that's the imagery of the sonar. If you'd like to learn more about the sonar or any other impact subsidy products, please head along to our website at impactsubsidy.com. Thank you very much for your time.